Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending. My name is Robert Knox. I'm a regional manager with Maxitherm. The <clears throat> Maxitherm is primarily a steam company, and over the, we've been in business for 20 plus years. Uh, over the years, we've had a lot of innovative designs. Uh, right now, we still have a, a patent pending for a boiler for a steam system that is 100% closed loop and 95% efficient. Um, what we manufacture are building heat systems, domestic water systems, clean steam generators, steam quality controllers for hospitals for sterilizers, and um, hot water blending stations. <clears throat> So basically, we, we've been dealing, we make uh, different types of systems. Here's a system with a heat exchanger. You can see the, the building heat pumps, distribution panels, control panels. Uh, we make duplex designs, uh, triplex designs. You can see the, the pumps over here with the VFDs and the heat exchanger there on the right side, heat exchangers. Um, we have enthusiastic reps, as you can see. <laughs> They like what they're doing. Um, another feature I'd like to point out, this is early on, but we have a vertical flooded heat exchanger. And to the left is a Grunfoss pump, and we call that pump our stability pump. And what it does, it helps us stabilize set points so we can peg it. And at the same time, it gives us insurance of flow. So we do business with a lot of different people, a lot of different customers. I'll just kind of quickly scroll through here. Um, so I want to get everybody on the same page. So I would like to start with the saturated steam table. As you can see, for every certain pressure on the left side there, you can see that there's a corresponding temperature. So at zero PSI, assuming uh, sea level, for example, we're 212. At 100 PSI, we're 338. Uh, at 16, we're 252. Uh, <clears throat> basically, for any given pressure, you, you have a certain temperature. So then to the right of that temperature is what's called sensible heat. And kind of remember that one BTU is the amount of energy necessary to raise one pound of water, one, one degree F. Uh, that's the sensible heat in the condensate or the water, if you will. And so if, if you would subtract uh, 212 or 180, 212 minus 32 basically equals 180 up there. Um, so that's our BTU content in the water at zero PSI, say. Any additional heat added to sensible heat will change the state, or basically will change it to a gas. So if you go to the right there, where it shows latent heat, latent heat is the heat of vaporization. And basically, it's the work of steam. When steam does its work, it gives up its latent heat. It's at the same temperature. And it goes to condensate, and then you want to rid, get rid of the condensate out of the equipment. Uh, so one of the things that's noticeable about latent heat is the fact that it continues to decline as you look at the table. So the higher the pressure, the less latent heat. So we have what I'll con consider a, con a conventional design that utilizes low pressure. And the reason they utilize low pressure because they got a higher latent heat. It makes sense. Um, <clears throat> one of the features in this table is... If you think of condensate coming out at 100 PSI, it's 338. If it goes to a vented system, it's zero PSI. So if I were to take the sensible heat at, at um, 100, subtracting from the sensible heat at zero, and then dividing by the latent heat, that would give me the percentage flash, which at 100 to zero is roughly about 13%. So flash is always a consideration because it's a gas. Uh, if you have a condensate line and you have two-phase flow, you want to consider the fact that the gas is there. So for example, just one pound of condensate, if you look at volume there, that's cubic feet per pound, one, one, pound, of, one pound of flash steam equals 26.8 cubic feet. And you think of that in the three-quarter inch line, that's quite a bit to hold in that three-quarter inch line. Just for reference, if you would divide the um, specific volume of steam at zero, by the specific volume, by the volume of condensate, cubic, cubic feet per pound of condensate, you got a difference of roughly 602, 1,602, 1,603. So a much larger expansion. So I want to move on now and uh, 
just wanted to make sure we had the table. So we have a conventional system here, and you can see that the boiler, let's see if I get my cursor on that, the boiler's down here. And let's say we're a university or, uh, or some such facility. We would distribute out of the boiler at high pressure. The reason we distribute out of the boiler at high pressure is our specific volume is much less, and we can, we can use smaller pipe. We would then come into the building, and we would, we would go through a PRV station. Now, here we're showing parallels, series PRVs in parallel. Um, <clears throat> those are generally set up for a one-third, two-thirds app, one-third, two-thirds flow. If you want to see a normal PRV, let me see if I can go back here. Up, up, up. Hold on one second. There's a PRV station right there, as you can see. As you can see, it's it's um, you've got isolation valves, you've got strainers, you've got eccentric reducers, you got the PRV. You might have a noise diffuser. You have a pilot line. You have more isolation valves. You have safety relief valves there that are vented to the roof. Let me go back to that and expand that. Ah, sorry about that. So what happens then is we knock down the pressure here. Here's our safety relief valves, we're vented. And then we come to the control valves ahead of the heat exchanger. The control valves we also set up at usually one third, two thirds. Hopefully they're sized properly. When this heat exchanger is sized, it should be two to five PSI entering steam. For example, if this was 15 PSI in this line, you would not size the heat exchanger for 15 PSI. It'd be you would size it for two to five, let there be a, con a pressure drop across these control valves so they can control. Uh, this heat exchanger has a vacuum breaker and air vent. Of course, if you're not at full load, you're at a partial load, you're gonna have an air steam mixture in your heat exchanger. Coming out of your heat exchanger, you're gonna have a trap. Um, that trap has to have a certain hydrostatic head or column of water ahead of it. If it's seven inches, you got a quarter pound. If it's 14 inches, you got a half pound. If you got three quarter inches, you got 21. Uh, you got I'm sorry, you got three quarters pound, and then after the trap, you want a gravity drain. Otherwise, you'll you'll flood out. You'll flood your heat exchanger. So you're going to gravity drain to a pump system. The pump will either be a pressure motor pump or a uh, electric pump. Uh, <clears throat> problems encountered would be um, on the PRVs. You have orifices. You have down. You have that sensing line. That can be done wrong. You have uh, pilot leaks or main valve leaks uh, on the cons on the steam control valves of the heat exchanger. You can cut your seat on the pumps, uh, electric pump. You can lose your seals. Pressure motor pump. You won't get the cycles that you'd like necessarily. So from the pressure motor pump, you see we go to a receiver right here, and then we go up back to the DA and back to the boiler. So what we do? Let's see if I can do this properly. We have a vertical flooded exchanger, and just just uh, here's some thermal images. You can see uh, spot temperatures where the uh, crossbars are. There's a spot temperature where it's condensate, uh, 268, 282 is the steam, and then 169 at the bottom there, where we're showing the condensate level. So we, what we do as MaxiTherm is we get the heats out of both the latent heat and we get the sensible heat out of the condensate. So, for example, let's just say I had a six psi steam system. Um, conventionally, it would be I would take that latent heat at six psi, divide that into the load, and there would be my pounds an hour. Um, as maximum, we have a control valve right here on the condensate side. So we're not controlling on the steam side; we're controlling on the condensate side. And what that's doing is we're sensing the hot water temperature coming out. Uh, that goes to a, a control panel. And that positions that valve to maintain that set point in the hot water. By design, we're, we're not going to be above 200 degree F at full load. Uh, what that gives us is a single phase flow coming out of the condensate line. So, for example, if I had 5,000 pounds an hour of, of condensate that comes down to 10 GPM, I'm looking at a half inch valve there. Um, let's go ahead. With MaxiTherm, what we've done by getting the heat out of the condensate is if I take 230 
minus 200, I got an extra 30 BTU there. So I can add that to my latent heat and I, and I come up with 989 BTU uh, per pound, which is about 3% savings. So if I take 100 PSI, um, temperature's higher, we're at 338. Again, let's say we're at full load, then latent heat, remember, is less, so it's only 881. But 200 degrees F minus 338 is 138. So I get a, another 138 BTU from a sensible heat. So basically my, my uh, uh, total heat per pound is 1019. We, off, we also deliver, uh, we always uh, calculate savings uh, for some reason so they can compare and contrast. Uh, so what we get rid of, basically we're trying to make it simple. So what we get rid of are the pressure reducing stations and everything that usually surrounds them. The one third, two thirds, less maintenance. We get rid of, we rate our heat exchanger to the safety valve on top of the boiler. So we don't require a safety valve and therefore we're, we don't have a, uh, we don't have a safety valve. We don't have a vent line that's going out to the roof that's supported by the building structure. So, and space. Obviously, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna save at least 40% space in the mechanical room. So basically what we have, we have, we have this vertical heat exchanger. Up here, you can see a zero load, it's flooded up here. And by the way, there's a trap right in here. Um, if we're only 10% load, We'll be just showing a little bit of coil. So in essence, we're like a variable surface area for the heat exchanger. It varies the surface area that's exposed to steam because we get the bulk of our heat from the steam. But we also get the heat from the condensate. And then down to bottom here, um, let me minimize showing here. Down at the bottom here, you can see a full load. We're 20 to 25% flooded. And um, that's it. it just, that load, that just varies. So one item here I want to point out real quick is you see we're going to have some high pressure drip traps. So a long time ago we came out with a, a device called the condensate mixer, and what it does flash steam. Instead of having a big bubble of flash steam, we're going to break that down to tiny bubbles. So we're able to take a high pressure drip trap into a flooded line. Um, I did a job at um, University of Pennsylvania on a building called Wistar. Uh, many years ago, and <clears throat> Wistar is is indicated by the blue graph there. This is uh, the BAS gave us this um, uh, graph here, and they made another building that was identical to Wistar, and they put a conventional system in. On the on the y axis, I'm sorry, my on the y axis is pounds an hour on the. Uh, X axis is time, especially about three years. But this compares our system to a conventional system, and the savings are really quite dramatic. Um, so I wanted to say that. So let's see if I can get back here. So here's the thing. Oh, that's good. Uh, let me, pardon me. No, I can't get back to it. Dang. Energy distribution has never. Oh my goodness! Trying to get back to a summary here. Bob, we'll, uh, we'll send that out after the presentation, but we're, we're about to the end of the time there. Okay, well, basically, as a summary, we don't, we don't have flash steam. We get rid of the flash steam. We use the energy from it. Therefore, we have less makeup. We're going to have less chemicals because they're less makeup. We're, <clears throat> we're not going to use a vacuum breaker on running because we're positive pressure all the time. If we're positive pressure... I, I'm not breaking a vacuum. My condensate's a lot cleaner because I'm not admitting air. We're about six times cleaner in the condensate. In, ter in terms of, um, <clears throat> uh, we have 
very good energy savings. Uh, I'm trying to find the slide right now, and I apologize. I'm trying to hit a... Sean, I'm trying to hit escape here to get to a smaller slide. Mm. Anyway, no worries. Um, well, well, but like I said, we'll uh, we'll send that out later. So, um, okay, send that summary out, and then yep. uh, of course, babe, I wish to thank everybody. I apologize for the uh, the computer here. Um, anyway, uh, if you have any questions, um, <clears throat> long 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 as our new rep, they've been doing a great job. They they bring a good energy and skill set to us. Um, <clears throat> So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact them. Um, and you'll be, you'll be receiving a summary slide uh, after this presentation. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Yep. Thanks, Bob. Thank um, you. Yeah. Anyone who has questions, please reach out to your long sales representative. Please join us next week where Brandon Pappas will be discussing Daikin and a product update. Thank you, everyone. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.